assalamu alaikum the topic of today's video is orthogonality of wave function so in this video i am going to describe what are the orthogonal wave functions first of all you have to consider the schrodinger wave equation the schrodinger wave equation is just like this h psi is equal to e psi where h is the hamiltonian operator and e is the energy value so there may be many acceptable solution to schrodinger wave equation if i consider this wave equation and apply it to a particular system if I consider this Schrodinger wave equation and apply it to, uh, to a particular system, then I will get a number of solutions, I will get a number of acceptable solutions to this wave equation. And for every solution, okay, for every solution, I will have a wave function corresponding to the energy value E, okay, having a corresponding energy value E. So, for two wave functions psi m and psi n, okay, from where psi m and psi n, uh, psi n has come, the psi m and psi n has come from the acceptable solutions of the Schrodinger wave equation, okay? As I have described earlier, that the Schrodinger wave equation can have many acceptable solutions. So, I, if I take only two, if I take two, uh, two wave functions, psi m and psi n, uh, at the time at the energy e m and e n, I say that if psi m has the energy e m and psi n has the energy e n, so, uh, if I apply this on psi m and psi n, if I apply the integration on psi m and psi n from minus infinity to positive infinity in the presence of d tau as volume element, then the answer will come out to be zero. If the answer comes out to be zero, then I can say that these uh, the, that these wave functions follow the orthogonality property. This orthogonality applies the independence of energy state. Okay, so if my wave functions follow this expression if my wave functions follow this expression then i can say that both of these wave functions are orthogonal so wave functions that are solution of a given schrodinger uh, wave equation are usually orthonormal to one another they are independent of one another okay so if i consider the normalization of wave function and if i consider the orthogonality of wave function combined then the equation will come out to be just like this Okay, the normalization and orthogonality conditions are combined as follows. If I take this minus infinity to positive infinity psi n star psi n complex and psi m d tau is equal to 1 and if n is equal to m, if psi n is equal to psi m then I can say that the answer would be equal to 1. So this equation here, this expression here is following the normalized, the normalization of wave function. But if this answer comes out to be 0 then it will follow the orthogonality of wave function okay the only difference between normalization and orthogon uh, orthogonality is that the in normalization the answer would come out to be equal to 1 whereas in the orthogonality the answer would come out to be equal to 0 so this formula this rule uh, will be applied in the numerical problems that i will solve next so on combining these two conditions so if i combine the first condition of normalization and the second condition of orthogonality the equation will come out to be just like this these relations can be combined as follows for minus infinity to positive uh, infinity psi n complex psi m d tau is equal to sigma nm what is sigma here the sigma here is known as the kronecker delta okay the sigma here is known as the Kronecker delta and it ha it can have the value of 0, it can have the value of 1. If the value of Kronecker delta is 0, then I can say that n is not equal to m because I, as I have described earlier, that in orthogonality of wave function, if I, uh, if this expression is followed, then n sh will not be equal to m and if n is not equal to m then this will be the orthogonality of the wave function then this will be the then these wave functions will be the orthogonal these wave functions will be orthogonal to each other the next thing is that if my n will be equal to m then the answer will come out to be equal to 1 so if n is equal to m the answer will come out to be equal to 1 so if the answer comes out to be equal to 1 so i can say that this here is the normalized wave function so on combining these two, uh, here the sigma n has come and sigma n is the Kronecker delta and Kronecker delta represents if there is an answer 0 then it will be the orthogonal wave function and if the answer comes out to be 1 then this will be the uh, normalized wave function. Okay, so Kronecker delta, so this equation is just a theoretical equation, this equation is just a theoretical equation which says that if my answer of this equation comes out to be 0, if the answer of this part of equation comes out to be 0 then this equation will follow the orthogonality of wave function. 
function and if the answer of this equation comes out to be equal to 1 then this equation will follow the normalized wave function this uh, this equation will follow the normalization of wave function okay so uh, this here is the psi n complex and psi m i can also change the complex here uh, okay if i say the psi n into psi m complex then it is also the same this equation and this equation both of these equations are same just uh, only the complex part is changed here so both of these equations are similarly equal to uh, kronecker's delta and kronecker's delta i have described you what is the kronecker's delta since i have combined the orthogonality and normalization of wave function so this equation here is known as the orthonormal wave equation, uh, the orthonormal equation, okay? This equation is known as the orthonormal because it includes the orthogonality and the normalization, okay? As I have described earlier. So, now we will move on towards the example to show the orthogonality of wave function. We are given two wave functions, psi1 is equal to x and psi2 is equal to x2. We have to prove that psi1 and psi2 are orthogonal to each other if we are given the range from minus k to plus k. So, first of all, I am going to write the same formula, okay? psi1 multiplied by psi2 d of x is equal to 0 and I will have to take the range from minus k to plus k, from minus k to plus k. I have to prove this equation to be equal to 0 in order, to, uh, in order for the both wave functions to be orthogonal to each other. So, the next thing I am going to do is put, just plug in the value of psi1 uh, is equal to x in place of psi1 and psi2 is equal to x2 in place of psi2. On, uh, on plugging in the value, psi1 has a value x, so I have placed x here. Psi2 has a value of x square, so I have placed x square in place of psi2, dx. And now I am going to prove that this equation uh, will be equal to 0 or not. x into x k will become equal to x cube x cube dx and you know that the uh, integration of x cube uh, will be equal to x4 divided by 4 over the range from minus k to plus k. So the next thing I am going to do is uh, apply the limits. On applying the limits, first of all I have to uh, place the upper limit. So the upper limit will say k raised to power 4 divided by 4 and next thing I will take minus and uh, and now in place of x, I, I have to write minus k. So in place of x, I am going to write minus k raised to power 4 divided by 4. Minus k raised to power 4 will become a uh, positive k4. So k4 divided by 4 minus k4 divided by 4. Since k4 divided by 4 minus k4 divided by 4 will be equal to 0. So I can say that psi1 and psi2 both are orthogonal to each other as their uh, integration over an interval of minus k to plus k has come out to be equal to 0. So consider this question in which I have been given the value of psi1 is equal to n1 a square minus x square and psi2 is equal to n2x a square minus x square over the range minus k uh, is less than equal to x and less, uh, less than equal to k. So uh, on solving this question, first of all, I have to write uh, the formula that says my range minus k to plus k psi 1 psi 2 d of x should be equal to 0. Okay. So, on plugging in the values of psi 1 and psi 2, we get uh, taking the left hand side of the equation for minus k to plus k, I have the value of psi 1 equal to n1 a square minus x square. Okay, I have just placed, I have just plugged in the value of psi1 and now I am going to plug in the value of psi2 that says n2x a squared minus x squared. Okay, and here is dx. The next thing you know, n1 and n2 are the constants and I will take it in common, n1 and n2 goes into the common and this is my range here and since this part and this part are same, uh, so I will take the square, x square minus x square becomes whole square. Okay. The next thing is n1 and 2 are still outside the integration minus k to plus k. I have to apply the formula here. The formula says a minus b whole square is equal to a square plus b square minus 2ab. I will apply the formula here and my answer will come out to be a4 plus x4 minus 2a square x square d of x. Okay. So the next thing. I am going to multiply this x inside. So on multiplying this x inside, the answer comes out to be a4x plus x5 minus 2a square x3, okay? And dx is still outside. Now I will apply the integration on whole of this equation. My answer comes out to be n1, n2. 
I have applied the integration since a4 is a constant so integration will not be applied on a4 but on x and the integration of x will come out to be x2 divided by 2. We are using the same formula that says x raised to power n has an integration x raised to power n plus x raised to power n dx has an integration x raised to power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. Okay, so this is the formula that we are uh, using here. So, x has an integration equal to x square by square and similarly x5 has an integration equal to x6 by 6 and minus 2 a square x3 has an integration of 2 x uh, x4 divided by 4. Okay, uh, and here the dx has been consumed and uh, dx has been consumed by the integration and the next thing is uh, we have a range equal to minus k to plus k okay so n1 n2 is still outside as common now on applying the upper range first of all on applying the upper range i have to plug in k in place of x everywhere so first of all plugging in the value a4 k square divided by 2 plus k6 divided by 6 minus 2 a square k4 divided by 4 so this is the value that I have got after plugging in the upper limit. Now I am going to plug in the lower limit equal to minus k. On plugging in the lower limit I get a4 minus k square divided by 2 plus minus k raised to power 6 divided by 6 minus 2 a square minus k raised to power 4 divided by 4. Okay, so this is what I get on applying the lower limit. So uh, solving on further, I get n1, n2, a4, k squared divided by 2, minus 2, a squared, k4 divided by 4, minus, since the square of minus k is also k square, the minus is consumed by the square. Similarly, the minus is also consumed by the square here. As you can see, the power is even. The even power means the minus is consumed. Okay, so the minus is also consumed here. The equation takes the following form. As you can see that this part of equation is similar to this part of equation. Okay. Okay, um, first of all, I have forgotten this bracket, this main bracket that multiplies n1, n2 with whole of the equation because n1, n2 was taken from whole equation. Okay, similarly, n1, n2 has again, is again being multiplied by the whole equation. Okay, so this part of equation becomes equal to this part. As you can see, a4 k square by 2 and a4 k square by 2. On, my, on giving the minus sign, we get similar results just like n1 n2 being multiplied by the whole equation so i have got the bracket so my equation becomes a4 k square by 2 plus k6 by 6 minus 2 a square k4 divided by 4 this minus is multiplied by this bracket inside the answer comes out to be minus k square k4 a4 k square divided by 2 minus plus minus k6 divided by 6 minus minus plus 2 a square k4 divided by 4 okay as you can see that this this part cancels out with this part similarly k6 by 6 cancels out with minus k6 by 6 and similarly minus 2 a square k4 by 4 divided by k cancels by 2 a square k4 by 4 and this part of equation becomes equal to 0 so n1 multiplied n2 is equal to uh, multiplied by 0 so the answer becomes equal to 0 so i can say that these functions this psi 1 and psi 2 this psi 1 and psi 2 over the range of minus k to plus k okay this psi 1 and psi 2 over the range of minus k to plus k are orthogonal to each other i can say that psi 1 and psi 2 are orthogonal to each other over this range so this was an example of, of wave functions which were orthogonal to each other